Happy New Year, and welcome to Nancy Wilson's Femina Podcast. This audio is brought to you by Canon Press. Start your new year off right with Nancy Wilson's Building Her House. Commonsensical wisdom for Christian women. How does a woman build her house? Nancy Wilson begins with a table, remembering how each scratch and stain in the wood chronicles a memory. Stories, jokes, questions, concerns, prayers, and discussions. She continues each essay full of stories and encouragement, the beauty of imperfection, the comfort of Velveeta, the strengths of mothers and daughters-in-law, the honesty that is submission, and the laughter of reading aloud. As ever, Nancy draws out our sins and weaknesses and sore spots and comforts us with the favor of God and rouses us to a joyous faith. Get building her house today at canonpress.com. Welcome to the Feminine Podcast. This is Nancy Wilson. Thanks for joining me today. And I should say Happy New Year to you, right? Happy New Year. It's January 1 when this is going to go up. And today is the 31st. So, Happy New Year, and I hope you have a great year. And since it's the first day of the year, you know, we wonder, don't we, what does this year hold for us? But God, in His kindness and mercy, has not given us that information, but He has given us His Word. So that is what we know and believe for certain every year. So today I thought I'd talk to you a little bit about what it means to stand fast in the Lord. Because we do know for certain that is what God wants us to do every day in 2021. We're going to look at three verses in the New Testament. The first one is 1 Corinthians 16, 13. I love this one. The language, the King James, I really enjoy this. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. All right, watch ye. This means you know, head up, eyes open, paying attention. You're watching what's happening and you're paying attention to your own soul. So you're watching. These are sort of, this is like a military stance, I think, here in this verse. You're on watch. You're on duty. You're not, (laughs) you're not to uh, be distracted and you're to hold your ground and not give way or turn tail and run. And so this implies that there will be some temptation that will present itself that makes you want to not watch, not stand fast, and not be strong. And so let's just have this mindset among us as we walk into 2021, that we're going to watch, we're going to stand fast in the faith, We're going to quit ourselves, behave ourselves like men, and be strong. So, what is it that we stand in when we're standing fast? Well, we stand in the faith. We stand by faith faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, faith in God, faith in the gospel, faith in the Holy Spirit, faith in God's word. We believe it. That's what our faith is. We believe it. We trust Him. So quit you like men. So how are we women to apply that? I love this. You know, I can assume that the apostle is speaking directly to the men here. But today, as ever, men need to behave like men, don't they? They need to behave like men and not like sissies. We women should truly appreciate strong men who are not giving way to all the cultural pressure, and there's so much of it to be soft or weak, but also we women should stand fast with them in courage and strength in the same way, like the men do. Yes, (laughs) there's not a different standard for the women. We're to be strong, not weak. And sure, they might be stronger in some ways. They should be, all right? We thank God for that, but we can be strong in our faith and stand fast in the faith. So, Behave yourselves like men, not like sissies, not like nincompoops, 
and be strong. Don't run away. Hold your ground. This sounds pretty inspiring, doesn't it? <laughs> and then let's look at another verse in Philippians 1.27 that mentions this same idea of standing fast. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. Conversation in this case is an old word for behavior. Let your life, let your behavior be as as a life that is consistent with the gospel, as becometh the gospel of Christ, because we represent him here on earth, and we say we're Christians, so we are exhorted here to make our lives match our profession, and not just talk the talk, but walk the walk. You've heard that many times before, so that our faith is genuine. And that's what testing is for, is to help us to see that our faith is genuine. It's a real thing. And I think when we hold fast, when we stand fast, when we are striving, when we're not running away, this shows that our faith is genuine, both to ourselves and to those around us who know us and love us, as well as those who maybe would like to see us fall and like to see us turn tail and run away, that it proves to them that our faith is genuine. We really believe what we say we do. So in this verse in Philippians, he Paul is saying, well, whether I come and see you in person or whether I just hear about your behavior from a distance, I'd like to know that you're standing fast. And you know how it is if you're bringing your children up to be obedient. You want them to be obedient even and especially when you're not looking, right? And this is what Paul is exhorting the Philippian Christians to be, that their behavior should line up with the gospel. So standing fast in one spirit in this verse, I think is living in a way that's consistent with our profession. Whether Paul is here or not, the Lord is near. So we are to be loyal and determined, even if we're the only ones. Years ago, In the 70s, there was a Christian musician named Keith Green, and some of you probably know who that is. But I was uh, working in a Christian bookstore where we sold albums, (laughs) large pieces of plastic with covers. But I remember one of his albums, there was a drawing on the front that was really striking. And it was some exotic ruler of some kind being carried on a litter by guards with whips. And at least as my memory, if my memory serves me right here, and all the crowd were down with their faces on the ground, except for one man who was just standing on his feet, refusing to bow. And that's what it means to stand fast. It just made a big impression on me. I don't remember the music on (laughs) that album, but I remember the cover. And it requires courage and faith to be that person. And you may not think you have it until God gives you some opportunity where you have to stand and you do it and you thank God for the courage to do that. So not only do we have to pray that we will be the kind of women who will stand fast in hard times, but we want to bring up our children to be strong in the same way. And the first way, of course, is showing them how. And if they don't see it in you, you can't expect them to imitate you in it. First thing is you have to show them. And then by teaching them courage in the little things when they're little. And maybe you feel a little shaky yourself, like you wouldn't be able to stand fast when hard times came. And so this is a great time to be praying for strength and courage and faith to stand fast. And one of the things you could do is read some stories of some courageous saints to your own children. It will encourage you and your kids. Double whammy. When our kids were high school, junior high, high school, we were still reading around the table. Doug read, I mean, stacks and stacks of books. But I remember one uh, book in particular. It was called Fair Sunshine, I believe. 
It's about the Scottish Covenanters. And so after dinner, he would, you know, grab that book and just read us another few pages about different Scottish Christians who gave up their lives for the faith. And oh my goodness, I had to get a box of Kleenex out every night. It was so stirring and it was just hard to listen with a dry eye. One of Doug's supposed relatives, in fact, a woman named Margaret Wilson, was in, her story was in that book. She was martyred at age 18 for her faith. And so, you know, there are many stories of very young Christians who stood their ground, who stood fast and left behind a tremendous testimony of faith. And so this is a great encouragement to us. I do remember after a few weeks saying, honey, could we please read something else? <laughs> I just, I can't take it every night. The sad stories, but, but they were very inspiring. So maybe you can take them in small doses. But stories of Christians enduring torture and death, um, these are inspiring and we need a healthy dose of that for sure. And then the last verse I want to mention today is from Philippians also 4.1. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. All right. So to wrap this little podcast up today, remember you are dearly beloved by Christ, in Christ. You are the joy and crown of those who have brought you up or are bringing you up in the faith. So stand fast. He will keep you. He will bear you up. He will give you the strength to be brave when you need to be. Don't give the enemy ground. Stand fast. Don't budge. That means even when you are tempted during the day in little areas compared to what I referred to in the book of, about Christian martyrs, little temptations that come, how quickly do you give way to them? Or do you stand fast? Do you give way to fear? Do you give way to anxious thoughts? Do you give way to envy? Do you give way to annoyance? Etc. Cetera, et cetera. Let's stand fast, ladies. Think about the areas where you know you are weak. Maybe you are tempted every day to grumble. Maybe you're tempted to gossip. Just think about your own vulnerabilities and then ask God to help you stand fast and resist temptation where you keep your mouth shut when you want to say something that you shouldn't. Now, these seem like no one's going to write a book about this, about your great faith and how you kept your mouth shut when you wanted to say something rude or something unkind or something uh, gossipy. Let's practice standing fast and being brave and acting upright in our daily lives. Because as we practice these things, we are storing up, right? We're getting stronger. So don't wait and say, well, I don't know if I'll ever be really tested in a way where I have to be brave and stand fast and, and acquit myself like a man. But you should be practicing every day in what your day brings you. And so start there. Start by resisting those temptations that still have you by the throat, the ones you want to give way to. And, and that's what you should reckon with right now is the flesh, the world, and the devil, right? So let's stand fast there. And maybe next time, that's what I will hit is the world, the flesh, and the devil. How about that? All right, so meanwhile, think about this and get a little bit of exercise standing fast. And I pray you'll have a really blessed week ahead. And welcome to 2021. Thanks for joining me. 